tēnā koto katoa e nā iwi o nā hoi whā, ka nui nā mihi kia koto. Ko Jim Sinner Tako Ingoa from Cawthorn Institute and the, lots of other members on the team who are listed on the slide who have done uh, certainly contributed a lot to this research. I've only got uh, five minutes, so I'm going to just kind of give you some, some quick highlights. And there's a couple of references where you can find more information. So um, the first part of our research has been exploring experiences with valuation in the Marba Sounds. And we have taken a broad definition of valuation and defined it as, and, and recognizing that any decision-making process that looks at how people use and value the marine environment involves valuation in some way, shape, or form, invites people to provide evidence for their values. And those values are then taken into account in some way by decision makers. So we've taken a, a broad, a broad uh, definition of that. And we've interviewed people in the Marva Sounds to ask them about their experiences in a range of decisions that have taken place in that environment uh, over, over the last couple of decades. So we uh, interviewed many people. We had visits on a couple of marae. We went on a boat trip out onto the, to the uh, Polaris Sound with people from the Iwi who have uh, Mana Whenua, Mana Moana status in that area. And we had a workshop in Picton with stakeholders and Iwi. Some of the key messages that emerged from that work, first one is that evidencing and advocating for one's values can be really demanding and damaging to people uh, financially, emotionally, personally. And this was true for some applicants as well as submitters. This, these are really demanding and challenging processes. And this other, the next point is that formal processes can privilege certain people and some kinds of values over other kinds of values. And that we need to appreciate that when we design processes to enable people to, to evidence and advocate for their values. The next point I wanted to make is that all valuation articulating processes are imperfect. There's, there's no um, completely right way to do it. And because of that, we need to be transparent and democratic and open to new ways to receive values and to consider those values. In situ experiences can be an effective way of receiving intangible values. That may be um, walking the land with people, going out on the water with people, and experiencing their values with them and giving them a chance to talk to you about their values. This work has been published in a paper in Marine Policy, and so I would direct you there for more information. Moving on, we have then tried to identify some principles and frameworks for valuation processes. And a principle we define as a guideline that states how something should be done to achieve better outcomes, socially desirable outcomes, whereas a framework is a way of organizing information that groups together related items to aid understanding, for example, by those uh, making decisions about how to manage the marine environment. So we undertook some more interviews and had some workshops in Wananga with um, some people. And this is documented in a, in a summarized in a report that we've uh, recently published. So many of the tentative principles are, in some ways, not groundbreaking. They've been recognized and identified in work elsewhere. But that doesn't mean they're always followed. And so we will be enunciating some of, some of these principles. But perhaps some of the more um, interesting and challenging ones are, are those that were suggested by our Wananga with Maori uh, researchers, or Maori experts in marine manage, uh, resource management. For example, that co-governance and co-management should be property resourced. And that, I guess it follows that it's not a true partnership if one party controls all the resources. So if a regional council or a government department is the one making decision, they say we want to have a, a co-governance arrangement with IWI, but IWI doesn't have any funds to support, support their decision making. It's not really a true partnership. Another principle that they put forward was that decision processes should reflect the treaty partnership and decisions should give effect to and not just consider EB views. That's obviously pretty challenging um, in a governance, in a kind of a 
traditional governance sense, but this is what Maori are telling us. If treaty partners don't agree, then they should keep talking until they, until they can reach agreement. So we're also then looking at tentative frameworks, and I'm just going to flick through these very quickly, um, looking at cost-benefit analysis, uh, ecosystem services, cultural, culture values frameworks, social network analysis, multi-criteria analysis, um, and maybe mix and match, maybe multiple ways to understand and organize information to help us um, with decisions. And we're hoping to explore these further in a case study in Tasman Golden Bay over the next uh, little while. And just some, I'm going to go over it here, just some practical realities. Valuation is a complex and difficult area, shaped by many steps, small decisions at various points. Um, so I'm just going to flick these up and say thank you. <laughs>